All right, here we go. I am here ready to show you how to create an escape button. For that, I've created a blank project. There is nothing here. Um, I just click new, typed escape button project uh, so that we can start from scratch. And that way um, you'll have everything you need to know. So as you can see, there's nothing in the game, nothing in the scene. We only have main camera, directional light. Our project is completely empty except for a script that I'm about to delete. So we have, um, we want to put in two buttons, one for escape, one for restart. The escape button is going to cause our game to quit. That lets the player quit out of the game whenever they want, instead of having to alt F4, like restart their device, something like that. Restart will let them restart the level so that they can try again if they fail. So we want to add two UI elements, both of them buttons. You can add game object UI button twice, or you can duplicate. We want to place them in the center. Uh, so you're going to press Alt Shift and then left click right over here to anchor. And we'll do that for both buttons. So I'm just left clicking this, by the way. And you want to rename your buttons to match what they're supposed to do. So we'll rename this Escape and rename this one Restart. Now currently they're overlapping and that's not going to help our player very much. So let's go ahead and translate this. Um, the total width is 160. So I want to go more than half of that width to the right and then more than half of that width to the left for the other button. So after doing that, um, I can clearly see both buttons. I want to change my escape text to escape text. I'm just renaming it. And then inside the text, I'll name that quit game so the player knows what they're doing when they press that button. I'm going to go to the other button, call this um, restart text, and then restart level question mark, keep it consistent. I want to make sure that these are in, yeah, I'll put an overflow mode on both of those. Not too important because those are kind of small fonts, but just in case. Now we're going to do the rest of this. Right now the buttons are activated, but I don't want them to be active all the time. So I'm going to disable both of these buttons. Now they don't appear. Now scripts do not um, work on an inactive object. So what I want to do is create an empty object, something that won't actually be in the scene to hold our script. We'll call this escape menu manager. Not too important what you name it, but remember descriptive names help out um, yourself later on in the project and other people if they're to join in. We're going to add a script, new script. We'll call this escape menu activator. Um, that should be fine. So I want to edit this in Visual Studio. And for the escape menu activator, it needs to do a couple of things. We don't really need the start function, so we can delete that. Um, I want to use buttons, which means I need UI. So using Unity Engine.UI. By the way, if I go too fast during any point in the video, feel free to pause it. You guys do have that power. I'm also going to use Unity Engine.Scene Management because I want to be able to restart the level that I'm currently on. So we need to create a couple of variables here. Um, the first one's a button for the escape button. And the second one is a button for the restart button. And we also need a bool for um, escape menu open. We want to know if it's open or closed. So by default, bools are false, which means it is not open. And then if we set it to open, that'll say it is open. So in update, we want to check if the escape menu is currently open. So we'll say if escape menu open, and that would be good enough, but we'll be more descriptive here. We'll say if it is open, actually it's, if it's not open, we want something to happen. And then, um, let's go back a bit. We also want to have an else clause for whenever the escape menu is actually open. We want something to happen. So when the user presses escape, 
we want them to open up the escape menu if it's not open and we want them to close the escape menu if it is open so right now it's not open the else clause would be if it is open so if it is open we want both of those to disappear and if it's not open we want both of those to appear so to make those appear we're going to have to say escape dot active true and then restart game object set active true and to make them disappear we want to say escape game object set active false and you can see where this is going restart game object set active Okay, um, we need to check if the user pressed escape. So we're gonna do input, get key, get key down, key code, escape. And then same thing um, over here, but actually we don't have to write our conditions. It's just gonna look for Did they do that or did they not? Um, so we've got a problem here in our if and else. Our else is not gonna recognize the fact that they have to press escape for us to care about this. So what we can do is we can make this two if statements. Let's put this one on the outside. We want to always check if they're pressing escape first and then check about this bool later. Um, if we didn't do that, then every single frame that they didn't press escape, the else would get called. So we don't want to waste our resources here. Let's just um, copy that, delete it, create another if clause, paste it in there, get rid of the and, and then we're going to include everything inside of that. All right. So right now our escape button will currently um, turn on and off our escape menu, but our escape menu doesn't do anything, it's just two buttons. So we need to create a couple of functions to make our escape menu actually work. And we're gonna call those public void escape. And public void restart level. So you need to put parentheses for a function and then inside these braces, that's where we actually put the function. So in the escape function, we want the application to close. So we'll do application.quit. Make sure you include parentheses here. And for restart level, we want to use scene management. So we're going to say scene manager dot load scene. And we want to load the same scene we're currently in. Um, if you want, you can create an integer and then feed an integer value. You could like find your scene and then plug that scene value into the integer and then plug the integer into here. That way you could load um, different scenes or you could have the same button used on different scenes. But for right now, I'm just interested in our one scene game, which only has scene zero, it counts from zero, one, two, three, four, etc., all the way up to as many scenes as you have. So we have an escape button function and a restart level function. They're just one line each. Um, they're not gonna get called unless we call them in our script or um, if we set up a button to activate those functions. And we're gonna set up a button to activate those functions. So right now they don't do anything, but we'll just go ahead and play test real quick. We have two buttons, we have this manager, and then you'll see that there's no button filled in yet. So we're gonna go ahead, drag and drop, um, nice and easy way to do things. Hit play and monitor. This bool is currently false. When you press escape, it goes true. I hope. Nope. Uh, we need to add that to our script. So the escape button will open up our menu here and we want our bool to be false. Oh, sorry, true. We want it to be true when our menu opens. And then when our menu closes, we want it to turn false again. All right.
try that one more time. So our bool should change every time we press escape. And we have a working escape menu, almost. So only one more thing we have to do, and that is to set up our buttons. So when you go to a button, if you check right over here in the on click area, you can add uh, what happens when you click it. And we need to first search for the script that has our function that we want and which object is that script attached to. So it's currently attached to our escape menu manager. So we're going to find escape menu manager. And then if you look within the escape menu manager, it'll show all of our components here. So we've got the escape menu activator script and we're going to find escape. Okay, and now we'll go to restart and do the same thing. Escape menu manager, find our script, and then restart level. Okay, so that is all we need to do here. And to show that our level is restarting, um, when I start the level, you know, it kind of looks like this. When I open up my escape menu, um, here's what I see. If I restart the level, it should go back to disabled. So now we're disabled again. Um, we still have everything in our hierarchy. So we can restart the level with the restart button. Quick game won't work yet because we're still in the editor. So we're going to build that and show you how that works. So we're going to go to file, build settings, add open scenes because we want to create a scene. We're going to call this scene one, not too important. And then we're going to go to um, save project and then build and run and we'll call this escape tester so it's going to open up our unity project in a separate window as soon as it's done and here we go we'll press escape it opens up you can restart the level and you can quit game and it quits out so that's how you make your escape button menu hope this video was helpful you can pause through it watch it again do whatever you need to do make sure this is in your game somewhere um, if you don't it can be a real hassle to try and quit out of your game when your only option is alt f4